you think Fidel Castro was a dictator? Yes. <laughs> a little awkward pause there. And yes, that is the focus of our Sunday talk, where we tap into the hot debate of the week. Today, Justin Trudeau's comments about Fidel Castro. The Prime Minister is defending a statement he released where he called the former Cuban president a remarkable leader and set off a storm of outrage. There is personal history here. In 1976, then Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau visited Castro and was roundly criticized for befriending a communist dictator. It is indicative of Canadians' desire to maintain an independent foreign policy. There's something for us in trading with Cuba. It's quite an amazing scene. When Castro attended Trudeau's funeral in 2000, he and Justin Trudeau shared an emotional embrace. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is being sharply criticized for his praise of the former Cuban president. And now he's getting his own serving of criticism for his eulogy that said, while controversial, Castro was a legendary revolutionary and orator who made significant improvements to Cuba's education and healthcare systems. Others were not so admiring. I'm really happy, you know, that Fidel is responsible for the death of a lot of people. Opposition leader Rona Ambrose said her prayers are with Cubans who continue to endure Castro's long and oppressive regime. President Obama said history will judge Castro's impact. Around the world, pundits and politicians are calling Trudeau a fool and worse. Senator Ted Cruz called his eulogy disgraceful. And Senator Marco Rubio asked if it was a parody. And now the hashtag Trudeau eulogies is trending with fake tributes to other famous dictators like Cambodia's Pol Pot. Joining us are panelists. Adrian Batre is the editor-in-chief of the Toronto Sun. Jonathan Kay is editor-in-chief at Walrus Magazine. And joining us tonight, Mark Entwistle, who was Canada's ambassador to Cuba in the mid-90s. He now runs a consulting firm that promotes Canadian business initiatives in Cuba. Um, uh, John, I'm going to start with you on this. What was your reaction when you heard the, the initial comments from the Prime Minister? I thought it was an example of exactly the sort of naive campus leftism that a lot of people feared would be the hallmark of Justin Trudeau's foreign policy. I think in general till now he's been fairly hard-headed about most things, but this was one of these slip-ups where I think some sentimentalism about Castro from his family's past seeped into a prime ministerial press release and I think he embarrassed himself and he should backtrack. Embarrassed himself. Well, very much so. He's being made fun of around the world. I, I don't necessarily th think we should care much what Ted Cruz thinks. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly, you know, the Washington Post had a roundup of this. Uh, it's become a meme of international diplomacy, this sort of, you know, these words, while controversial, you know, uh, th those words are supposed to sum up decades of dictatorship, of repression, of homophobia. You know, Castro put uh, gay Cubans into prison camps. And to sum that up with the words, while controversial, and then go on to a few hundred words of just gushing praise for a dictator uh, really rubbed people the wrong way, including me. Mark, you actually knew the guy. You lived just down mm -hmm. the road from him. Yeah. Uh, what did you think when you heard the statement from Justin Trudeau? Well, I thought that, uh, uh, that the Prime Minister was probably facing one of the uh, challenges we have with discussing and explaining Cuba in general, which is our tendency to um, force Cuba into kind of an artificial binary choice between good and bad or success or a failure. The problem or the challenge with Cuba is it's a tremendously nuanced place. And I think that, in fact, uh, uh, this tendency we have sometimes from the outside of Cuba to treat it as kind of a caricature and a bit cartoonish, and it's, it's either this or that, doesn't reflect the nuance of Cuba and is, in a way, a disservice to the Cuban people who live this... Um, contradiction in their everyday lives all the time. There's some things that are the Cubans have done well and other things they haven't done very well. And one, the, one of the things we've had a problem in Canada for a very long time is with individual political rights. Uh, it's been, uh, I, when I was ambassador, we used to talk to the Cubans all the time. But in other areas, uh, they've done, so, they've been quite successful. You're a former diplomat. Did the Prime Minister embarrass himself? Did he make 
a cartoon stand here. Uh, <laughs> uh, as a, and as a former press secretary and the prime minister, <laughs> I think probably there was some sloppy uh, uh, editing there, and it could have been more balanced. On the other hand, what you also get is some of the reaction. Um, to my earlier point, uh, you know, uh, Ron Ambrose's statement, uh, Kelly Leach made a statement, which is this kind of the same mistake in a way perhaps the Prime Minister made, but just the other way around. It's the exact same thing because the Cuban reality is much more than the way they presented it at the same time. Adrian, what did you think? Well, it astonished me how tone deaf the, the statement was, but I mean, I, I agree with what Jonathan has already said. Like, it was, it was so gushing. It was so over the top. It was emotional. I think what, what struck me is that in the entire time that this statement was being written, and to be sure, it wasn't written by the prime minister himself. I mean, perhaps he had a few words or a few lines mm -hmm. in there that were personal. Um, someone in the Department of Foreign Affairs wrote that. How, with the army of staff around the prime minister, would they have not have said, you know, let's perhaps scale back from this and step back and recognize that the reason why we're saying that he was the longest serving uh, leader of that country is because he's a dictator. How did they not acknowledge that this was going to go off and set off the, this the epic storm that it has? And he has embarrassed himself. He's embarrassed our country because he said in that statement, I speak on behalf of all Canadians. Well, he, I don't think he did in that, in that one, to be sure. So he's, he has got to step back from this one. It, it seems from what I've seen on his, from his staff and social media, they're not prepared to crawl this one back anytime soon. But this one's going to follow him when he when he gets back from whatever latest trip he's on. Well, I guess the the line here is: Do you the man has died? Do you rejoice? As some Americans are rejoicing in that he's dead. Ron Ambrose was was saying not acknowledging anything that he's mm -hmm. done. Like, what is the line when someone's died? Well, generally, you don't speak ill of the dead. I think it's um, that's sort of the, the courtesy you pay to them in general. I mean, there are exceptions. So when, you know, a full full blown terrorist dies, for instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, but generally, you don't speak ill of the dead. But if you're going to say something, it, it should be balanced, and it shouldn't be in a spirit of sentimentality. And in Trudeau's case, I, I think he comes by it honestly. His brother Sasha wrote a piece for the Toronto Star 10 years ago in which he gushed about the Trudeau family's history with Castro and told these stories about how Castro never sleeps and he's like a superman and mm -hmm. he dived mm -hmm. 50 feet into the water to get sea urchins for their dinner. <laughs> I mean, it was like a North Korean propaganda newspaper. I mean, it was really, uh, it was bizarre. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, to give Justin his due, he sort of was marinated in that growing up. His father, Pierre, seems to have had some kind of weird political fetish about uh, Fidel Castro as like a superman of the left. Mm. Is that true, Mark? Um, the two of them did have a very particular relationship from what I saw. Uh, Pierre, after he was prime minister, would come down privately. Sometimes he, he came on a few business delegations, but he would also come privately. We'd have these quite bizarre dinners um, <laughs> in which they would spend hours talking about world politics and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, from Fidel Castro's point of view, uh, who was not a very good listener at all, <laughs> it was the only time I ever saw him be actually be quiet and partly it was to try to understand the Americans, although the Cubans understand the Americans completely well. This is one of the, the uh, there's a, a, a disequilibrium of knowledge in a way. The Cubans understand the United States tremendously. The Americans do not understand Cuba at all. Uh, but uh, uh, they, do, they did come across as kind of intellectual soulmates, as I've said in the past. And, and Pierre Trudeau would actually you know, say to Fidel Castro, yes, change but don't rush it because it took us 800 years to develop our democratic institutions so you can't do it overnight. And they'd have these conversations like this. Well, it sounds like a man crush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that I, man crush made its way into a prime ministerial press release. And embarrassed our country. Yeah. And we are being made fun of the world over. I mean, for so long, Prime Minister Trudeau has had, Justin Trudeau has had quite a, uh, a love-in with, with everybody around the world. But now, as, as uh, Jonathan mentioned earlier, this has become a character. This is this, is this left-wing, um, bizarre obsession with, with dictators. And I, I don't understand it, and I don't want to get my mind wrapped around it, because it's, it's, it's frightening to me. But I, I think that we can't forget what Fidel Castro did. I mean, we, he, he mentioned, Trudeau mentions in the statement about, you know, he, he did so many great things for, 
for the Cuban people. He, this man threw his political opponents in prison. They rounded up people and shot them. I mean, this is this is not whitewashing history. That's a reality of what many Cuban families face. They have fled shark-infested waters to get to the shores of, of Florida because of, of, of his dictatorship rule. And it's no different under his brother. There are comparisons being made now to the, the reactions to uh, Stephen Harper when King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, not exactly a bastion of uh, human rights <laughs> no. with executions mm -hmm. and stonings there, um, people saying that it's hypocritical, that very few people spoke out at the time about, you know, it, 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 and is that hypocritical, that everyone's ganging up on Castro but not on uh, the, the Saudi king? It is true that these events can make hypocrites of us all. You know, when Hafez Assad died in Syria, uh, Western leaders, including Jacques Chirac, uh, uh, marched in his funeral parade. Uh, and it's true in Saudi Arabia... The war on terrorism has made us hypocrites because we regard the Saudis, despite the fact that they have a more dictatorial society than Cuba's, uh, they are our allies. And so we're forced to say nice things because we want a, a balanced transition there. Uh, in Cuba, though, there's, there's no real reason that we have to, to watch our tongues. Uh, it's, not, it's not sitting on a powder keg or anything like that. Uh, and we can speak honestly. And I we're think not that, selling them arms. Yeah, yeah. You know, if we sold them arms, then we'd have to say nice things. Mm -hmm. But if we, um, if we were honest, you know, we'd, we'd say the usual nice things someone say when someone dies. But we take stock of the fact that this is a country that needs to join the 21st century. It needs to become a democracy. It needs to embrace human rights, the rule of law. It's interesting. When Donald Trump got elected, Angela Merkel sent him a congratulatory message saying, we look forward to being a full partner with America in your pursuit of democracy and the rule of law and all these things we have in common. That was a brilliant message that Merkel sent. And that's the kind of message Trudeau could have sent. Is there a, a hypocrisy here? I mean, even the Canadians don't seem to have a problem with Cuba. Thousands of them go there every year. <laughs> well, um, the, the thing about Cuba as well, and, and, and I don't want to become a little too egg-heady about this, um, but when you are in the uh, parsing out the balance of all of these things, there are other aspects of Cuba that one has to be uh, careful about as well. Um, uh, there are difficult times in Cuban history without question. Cuba has changed a lot in the last few years. A lot of the, of the things that we talk about Fidel Castro uh, uh, now are, are really typical of the 1960s and 70s and 80s. Uh, uh, the opening of the United States is really Raul Castro, uh, the opening of the Cuban private sector. But there are other considerations uh, that, it, to be truly balanced, you would have to um, uh, 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 take as a factor uh, the v highly hostile and aggressive U.S. trade and investment embargo against Cuba, which um, frankly has uh, um, uh, distorted uh, uh, Cuban reality, uh, active intelligence efforts to overthrow the Cuban state, which quite frankly, possibly continue to this day, despite President Obama's um, uh, undertakings. Uh, Cuban history's been very rough. That revolutionary period was very rough. So there's, there's a lot to understand about history. Cuba, where it comes from. I've got to wrap up in just a few seconds, but last word mm -hmm. to you, Adrian. He was backing off the Prime Minister today, saying a little bit, saying, yes, he's a dictator. Mm -hmm. where, what are you going to watch for now? Well, I'm going to look for, and I think all Canadians should look for, even a more of a crawl back from this. I don't think that this is over yet. The Prime Minister has the luxury of being overseas right now, but once he gets to that uh, parliamentary press gallery and they get their hands on him, I think that it's, it's, we're going to this, this one's not going away for him for him anytime soon. Well, it was quite uh, quite the weekend. Thank you so much for being You're with welcome. us.